And obviously, if there's anything I cannot answer today, we'll, we'll follow up with you. So, to no more delays, let's just get started. All right, we're going to go on the presentation. Whoop, I got one. I guess uh, we're looking at uh, About Us. Scott, uh, can you confirm you're getting the slide number two? Uh, not yet. Not yet? Okay, let me see. Uh, about Us? How about now? Let me try it again here, just to make sure. Yep, we've got, we've got about us now, so we should be good to go. Okay. Know. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to verbally tell you are going to switch. If for some reason it doesn't come up, just, uh, just uh, let me know, okay? All right. So we are a company based in the United States. We were founded in the year 2000. We're about 40 employees uh, split between the U.S. Uh, we have two locations, uh, Dallas, Texas, and Orlando, Florida, where I am located. And we also have a development center in Yerevan, Armenia. Uh, it's a product is designed in the U.S., but we do all of the uh, nitty-gritty work in uh, in Armenia, both the hardware and the software. It is um, it is all designed by EPG. All of the boards are embedded, uh, customized hardware, and the software is all ours. So it is not based on Asterisk or or any other open source uh, uh, engine. Uh, and like I said, the headquarters are in Plano, Texas. I'm going to go to number three, APG benefits. Uh, some of the, generalizing is some of the benefits uh, of our... Uh -huh. Sorry, Mario, it hasn't, it hasn't gone through to the next slide yet. I'm not okay. sure what's happening there. Okay, let's see. You get it now? Not yet. Yeah, we have now. Just click through to the next one quickly to make sure it's going to work. Yeah, if not, we'll let you. The next one that says QX. Oh, for some reason, it's not passing through the slides. Let me just share this. Can you, can you bring yours up? Yours up, and yeah, then we'll I'll let bring you. It up from here. Okay, yep. all right. Well, let me talk about uh, FPG benefits. Um, well, he brings uh, his up. Uh, it's pretty much generalizing on. Um, the benefit of our solution. Uh, we, we ship with most of the features included in all the in the base products. We do have some features that you pay a license that are typically advanced and uh, and we have some functions that you can download from our website. Uh, also some of them are free, some of them you pay a license to utilize. Uh, we do have the function all the functionalities of the PBXs but uh, the uh, we do have very special features that you won't find in some of the other products. So when you go to our portal, you can see some product comparisons uh, where you see some, some of those differences, and it may help you uh, identify uh, between us and somebody else. Sometimes we, we get challenged on products that are cheaper uh, priced, but they don't have all the functionality, and that functionality may be important to you and your customer, and therefore it's better for you to choose our solution. Um, I guess you can, uh, we switched the slides already, Scott? Yep, we're good, yep, we're good to go. Okay, all right, so I'll just cue you to make the change and, and then we'll go from there. So um, essentially, we're compatible with mo most of the SIP devices in the market today. SIP is a mature protocol, so pretty much anything that is SIP, uh, either from a registration perspective or sending or receiving a call, we should be able to handle. But uh, one thing important about us is that we auto configure many uh, brands of phones and many models, including Snom, Yaling, Polycom, Mitel, Grandstream, Alcatel, Panasonic, Fanville, and some others. So we take the time to uh, certify some of the newer models, uh, software releases um, paired up with our software release. We have a template loaded up in our PBX that when we auto discover or we what we call plug and play the phones. We we'll push it to the phone. You don't have to open the GUI to configure, and it makes a basic configuration very simple in many cases because you don't have to actually do anything to the phone. We will find the phone. So that's a, a sort of a differentiator of our product from some other brands. The configuration and maintenance is relatively uh, simple. Um, I'm, I'll, 
the auto configuration I just mentioned is one part of it. But you can also create complex scenarios. You know, we have a very sophisticated routing table that will let you do pretty much whatever you want. Uh, so once you get familiarized with the product, you can get very creative in that area. We don't charge any annual maintenance for either uh, the appliances or the licenses. So you buy the appliance, you buy the license. It is uh, for life uh, permanent. You don't have to pay any maintenance on that. Uh, the same thing with software upgrades. If you register in our portal, which we encourage all of the channels to do, uh, with a serial number, you get access to it. As an end user, if you're a reseller, we'll give you reseller access, and you can download software updates, and uh, it doesn't cost you a penny. So uh, we do uh, some software updates at least once a year, but we have new features, uh, and those are free uh, for you to use. Uh, some of them may be licensable, but the majority of the features are in response to what customers want, so we just, we just put new features in the software, and we at least have one release a year with some of those. Competitive prices, a stable product. We started selling in 2004, so it's been 11 years in the market. Allo has been selling our, our quarter line for, for many, many years, and they can probably confirm that with you. And we have very good, uh, very good technical support and, uh, and training. Okay, next one. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the QX uh, line of PBXs, and then we're going to talk about the gateways. So generalizing those PBXs, uh, uh, their appliances from 16 to 2,000 extensions. You know, we have uh, three PBX models. Two of them are a little bit more in the SMB space, lower end, and we got one product that is pretty much enterprise. That is a server. We're going to be talking about it uh, here shortly. Um, like in most of these uh, devices, it supports traditional and analog telephone, analog telephones FX, through FXS ports and SIP IP devices, SIP phones, and other devices. And then on the trunk side, you can get uh, analog digital, or you can have uh, SIP trunks, as you'll see uh, coming up. Products that have uh, cameras uh, that are based on SIP that we work with us very well, and uh, along with our phones. So there's a combination of new devices that opens up a lot of possibilities that are also compatible with the system. Uh, very important, includes network and security functions, uh, especially for the small uh, to medium enterprise. If you have uh, a company, let's say, between you know, 5 and 20 users, you can use our product as the router, firewall, VPN appliance of the company right behind broadband. Uh, it, will, it, it includes those functions. You can, specified port uh, translations if you need to do that, or specified services. But you have a, an embedded firewall. You have a VPN capability, either IPsec, L2TP, or PPTP that you can set up between the PBX and another endpoint. And you can have a, a, a DHCP server uh, that does the NAT. All of that is included. So uh, very uh, uh, good or it's a, it's a great product for small offices because you don't need to have a separate router. And if you put a route on the internet, uh, either what is dynamic or static IP address, you can get to it remotely if you want to manage your customers' uh, PBX remotely. We also have some security functions that we have added recently. Uh, we added SIP IDS or SIP intrusion detection. Uh, very uh, interesting capability. You enable it and it will detect if someone is trying to place uh, calls through your system or authorized calls through your system or trying to do some SIP registrations that are not really uh, uh, part of the way you configure the system. It will block those IP addresses and you have to go back and manually unblock them later on. So since uh, fraud is a real threat uh, nowadays and hackers are all the time trying to do SIP calls and, and take control of your PBX, this SIP IDS helps tremendously in trying to avoid that. Uh, we have language packs for multiple countries as are free out of the web if you're going to install this in, in some other location. The, these are compact modular uh, boxes with low power consumption. Okay, next. Uh, the first appliance is a QX50. I'm going to show here uh, MSRP prices in US dollars. This is a, a the, the prices that we publish in the U.S., the price list in Australia 
is a little bit different. There's importation, and for that you have to talk to Scott. Uh, he will provide you the proper prices, but it will give you a perspective of what the, the cost of this unit. So the QX50 is about is $800 MSRP. It includes two FXS ports and two FXO ports. In addition, it has a LAN and a one Ethernet connector, as you see here, and uh, has an audio analog audio in, audio out ports. The audio in is used for a music on hold if you want to use a recorder, uh, external uh, type of analog system, or if you want in the audio out is used for paging. If you want to have create paging groups and you want to connect to an external amplifier or system, you can use that port. Uh, it, hand, it comes in with 16 IP extensions, expandable with licenses up all the way to 50. So it's a 16 to 50 IP PBX. The licenses for expansion come in different flavors, A, 16, 32, 64, and you can buy these licenses and, and or multiples of them and pile them up one on top of the other to get the type of uh, or the quantity of extensions that you desire. Um, 16 simultaneous IP calls, uh, which is good capacity for an appliance of this size. And the way we sell these devices is that we give you the maximum amount of trunks on the, um, on the base system, and then we just uh, uh, sell licenses for expanding on extensions, okay? Very uh, popular product, uh, uh, very good uh, uh, price points. Next one. The next one is a QX200. Now, this is a little more, more intermediate product. Uh, it is the same size, physical size as a QX50, but it, it does have more capacity. It has uh, four, uh, two additional FXO ports, and it starts with 24 IP extensions, expandable with keys to 200. So it's a, a 24 to 200 IP PBX and uh, a lot more concurrent call capacity. It can do 64 concurrent calls on the trunk side. It is only $300 more, so it retails for $1,100 US. The next one. Next one. Okay, thank you. <laughs> the next one is a QX2000. Uh, this is a, a server appliance. It doesn't have any any FXS or FXO ports. Uh, it is uh, enterprise level, $10,000 MSRP, starts at 200 extensions, expandable to 2,000. A large capacity of concurrent calls or audio conferencing or video conferencing as well as um, um, call recording capability, uh, call center, ACD for call center, and so forth. Uh, we mentioned a redundancy option on this product, but it is actually available in all three, the 50, the 200, and the 2,000. Uh, you, the way it works is that you buy a redundant unit, uh, base unit. You don't have to buy redundant unit licenses, uh, feature licenses, but you buy a redundant unit uh, uh, redundancy license, and it works in a hot standby. You connect it on the same LAN as a primary, and then if you do have a failover, uh, it keeps all the configurations uh, synced up, and it will uh, essentially uh, take over the configuration of the phones, and you'll be running in a few minutes. Uh, it actually, um, all the calls that you have in transit will be lost, but at least you're back running within a few minutes while you remove the main unit from service and figure out what was wrong with that. Uh, so it's actually a very uh, good feature for those uh, high availability situation, especially in a system of this size. The next one. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about the functions of the PBX next. And we're going to talk first about the functions that come with the system, and then we'll cover some functions that you have to uh, buy a license uh, for, which are mostly advanced. Here's a, not a complete list, but uh, partial list of what is included on the PBX. Some of them are highlighted in red to, exp to, to highlight a little bit. I'm going to mention some of those, but pretty much everything that is available on a high-end system nowadays is included on this box. Uh, for example, we have Find Me, Follow Me, which is very popular. It lets your incoming call ring your desk phone. Uh, you can also put your secretary's phone, your home phone, or your mobile device, and you can pick up the call 
in any of those. Uh, so you will never lose uh, a call coming from your customers. We have a function that we we'll call call relay uh, that is listed in here. Uh, very interesting. For example, uh, if you're on your mobile device, you can call in from your car to your uh, auto attendant and then either authenticate by caller ID automatically or pulse uh, on the on the phone your your ID and it will let you place calls uh, to destination numbers using the dial plan of your QX device. So it will be look to the end customer that you're calling in from your office where you're actually in your car. And it will let you do repetitive calls. So I use it a lot, for example, going to the office, calling to, uh, the team overseas who is already awake and I can do relay calls, three or four calls before I get to the office and be up to speed uh, without having to, uh, to waste time. Uh, we do have paging intercom, which is typically done through the IP phones that uh, have hands-free mode. Uh, many of them, most of the ones that we uh, auto configure support these features. Uh, they're very popular too. Uh, config auto save, you can actually save uh, every so often automatically the configuration of the system. Uh, in case you make any change and you want to make sure that uh, it is backed up, it can be done automatically. Auto attendant, we, it is included and in not only one auto attendant, but you can have more than one. You can have several. So you can have DID numbers uh, that drop to different auto attendants with different messages. And uh, for example, a multi-tenant type situation where you want to use one device and, and support it with three different companies. Uh, then you can have multiple auto attendants or multiple levels on the auto attendant. We have an Outlook add-in for, um, it's an application for essentially using a call button on Outlook and out of your contact list in Outlook in Microsoft, uh, place a call through the PBX to the destination. It actually rings back on your extension in your desk and connects both calls. Uh, time of day routing, uh, you can actually have, uh, for you can change the routing automatically so that it goes into IVR or uh, a different extension. You can have, um, uh, for example, a night service where uh, the receptionist leaves early uh, or at not at the same time every day and she wants to activate a, a, an auto attendant, she can do that through the keypad. So you can have a code that you determine in order to activate the route that would change the call from the receptionist to the uh, IVR automatically uh, or on demand. Uh, remote extensions, for every local extension, you can have a remote extension. Uh, or you have workers that are not in the office and they're going to be working remotely. Uh, you can set up just remote extensions for them that will be part of the dial plan in, uh, of, uh, within the office. A failover routing, uh, that means that, for example, you're doing SIP calls through a SIP provider and uh, the broadband is lost, you can have a secondary route to go to another provider or grab an FXO line and place calls through the FXO. So if the primary route is failed, you can have an alternate route on the call routing table to handle the call. Okay, uh, next one, next slide. Uh, some of the advanced features, and this is not all inclusive, but you know, uh, just to illustrate some of the features that we have, they're all available in our portal. We have an application I call, actually this one is available on the Droid Store or the Apple Store. It doesn't cost you anything, you download it for free, and it's like a callback service. Uh, you can open the application, pick up contacts or, or dial phone numbers, and it will send that number to the QX device that is registered to, and then it would the, the QX device will call that number, that destination number, and it will call you back on your mobile. Uh, now it can call you back on your mobile plan, or it can call you back on a soft phone. All that is programmable, and then connect the two calls. Again, it's, it looks like you're talking from your desk, uh, so it's a callback feature, and uh, uh, it doesn't cost you anything to use this application. It is not a soft phone. If you want to use a soft phone, there are many of them like uh, Counterpath, uh, X-Lite, or Bria, or Phoner Lite. Um, there are so many of them nowadays that uh, uh, pretty much any of those will work with us. 
we do have an option for this I call that is under license. It's a $40 license. It's called uh, iToggle, mobile toggling. Uh, actually, $40 for four licenses, I believe. Uh, what it does is that it there's a button on the application. It's a little uh, phone button at the bottom of the screen there on the on the right uh, on the icon, and you can toggle the call between your mobile device and your desk phone. So if you're coming in or out of the office and you want to hand over the call either from the desk phone to the mobile or vice versa, if you um, are using iCall, you can press a button and do that action. It will be transparent to the uh, to the end user. We have an application called QCC that is uh, very interesting for resellers. Uh, what it does is that uh, it's free. That's the best part. <laughs> it is uh, for Windows, uh, and you download it and install it, and it will let you monitor uh, QX devices remotely. So if you want to manage uh, some sort of maintenance or support to your customers, and you want to charge them for that, you can install this tool. You can actually ping the devices remotely, you will get notifications if they're not available. Uh, you can reboot them, do firmware updates, you can upload configurations, save configurations, uh, do configuration changes uh, via what is called the legible configuration file. So it is a sort of a management tool uh, for those channels that want to provide that kind of service and they want to have something that will help them do that. It's called a QCC. Uh, EMS uh, is another free tool that you download. Uh, it's essentially to get an MP3 uh, file list uh, to be used for home music or cue music. So instead of loading up uh, WAV files inside of the PBX for those functions, you can uh, have a playlist on a computer, and then uh, this application will stream it to the QX for that purpose. Next one, please. Surveillance support. This is very interesting. I mean, it's a sort of a new thing. Going on the uh, a QX system on the center, uh, we're showing uh, SIP uh, audio and video phones on the left. Uh, security cameras on top, uh, door opener on the right side, uh, mobile device uh, on the bottom, and uh, paging device uh, in the center below. I think, uh, can you hit the next one? Ah, no, sorry, Scott, go back. I, I thought I had a, a, a little uh, animation slide. But here's the deal, you know, obviously with the uh, video phones and the audio phones and the BBX, you can place calls. But some of the security cameras, like Groundstream, has some models. Mobotics has some models, too. Uh, actually, are SIP also, so they can register as an extension to the PBX. And many of these cameras have also a speaker and a microphone. Actually, I think most of the cameras have a, a microphone. Some of them you can add a speaker separately or it's integrated. But it's very powerful because you can actually, from any phone, and in particular the video phones, you can call these cameras. And not only can you see what's going on, but you can talk and listen to people in the vicinity of the camera. So for if you're in a corridor or if you, look, if you have several cameras on a warehouse and you want to check out what is going on in the warehouse, you can actually use uh, call through the camera. It is actually even more convenient because uh, you may talk into someone in a warehouse that is actually uh, physically doing something. They don't have to walk into the phone and answer the call. They can just speak up and then it will be picked up by the camera microphone. Uh, the same thing with the door openers, you know, they you, you can configure them to go through the PBX and do like a multiple extension ringing or a find me, follow me uh, of several extensions. And uh, when someone is at the door, it will ring all those phones. Uh, you can also program it so that after hours, it would send a call to a mobile device, okay? And you could even have a BRIA with video uh, register uh, on our uh, QX, and you could receive the video feed from the door opener, and then you can choose whether to open the door uh, or not. So um, it is very, or you can even send the door opener to a, a, a voicemail if you want to, okay, uh, when someone is at the door. Uh, play different messages. So it becomes a, a very powerful uh, appliance not only to integrate voice functions, 
but to integrate con uh, access control, some security uh, functions also. And then finally, uh, we show here a paging device at the bottom of the screen. And then uh, uh, this device, like for example, a SNOM PA1 or a cyber data or a 2N type device. And you can combine paging devices along with uh, phones and with cameras and have them all be part of paging groups. So uh, all you need to do is see if you have any deficiency in coverage uh, with, between your phones and your cameras and maybe use a paging device for that purpose and now you have paging capability through the new PBX without having to install speakers and, and amplifiers throughout the, uh, the building. Okay. Next one please. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, some uh, enterprise features. Uh, before I get to that, uh, uh, the, on the previous slide on the security, the important thing here, the message is that the reseller can get into other markets with their customers, not only voice. And it, it, so now you can be a, a little more complete in the uh, services and the systems that you can install, and you use a PBX sort of as a central resource for that. Okay. Next one, uh, enterprise features. Let's go to the next one. Uh, we have here, these are features that you typically buy with a license, uh, pay for a license. Uh, we have a desktop communication console or a HUD. Uh, this is only for Windows. And essentially, when you install it, you open up a, a, a screen and then the application. And then you have different um, windows that you can choose uh, to see on the screen. Here we're showing three of them, uh, but you can show more. Uh, you can have a phone control panel that will let you uh, place calls uh, or receive and answer calls or transfer or hold calls. You can also have an instant messenger window that will let you do IM between other users of the DCC. You can have a uh, Uh, history also if you want to see that. Uh, you can have your extension uh, directory for the uh, PBX or if you want to use LDAP you can also see the directory of LDAP. And you have a contact card window which is what you see on the right side. Uh, you can choose which cards you want to see. Cards represent extensions. You can see the status if they're on use, if they're ringing, if they're uh, on hook or off hook. Uh, you can also see uh, present status in this uh, cards if the user is, is going to activate presence. And you can intercept calls or you can do click to dial uh, by grabbing the card and, and depositing the card in your own extension. So it gives a little visual activity of what's going on in some of the extensions within the company. Uh, we also have uh, uh, presence. I said presence watching. Yeah, click to call and call intercept. Uh, for, uh, one thing about the chat, uh, it's uh, just for you to know. You can actually uh, send an IM to a phone, like a Snow phone, uh, a phone with a display, uh, and it would actually show that message on the phone. Uh, I don't know exactly what phones uh, work with this, but uh, so if you want to do, send a message to someone specifically that doesn't have a DCC and display that on the phone, you can do it. Okay, next next slide, please. Auto dialer. Uh, auto dialer is uh, for those, uh, it's kind of a, a special function. Not everybody, uh, only a few people uh, use this, but it's essentially uh, an, a, an automated way for you to create a, a dialing list of several numbers that you want to automatically uh, and then play some pre-recorded messages and then have uh, given the option of push some buttons and take some actions. Uh, for example, uh, the best example is a doctor's office that wants to confirm the appointments for the next day. They usually have a, a receptionist or, or an, a, an office worker call all the appointments, make sure that they're going to show up. So you can use that uh, automatically with the auto dialer. You, you load up on an Excel file a list of phone numbers, and then you can, uh, it, will, it would at a certain time uh, dial out those numbers, and it would, uh, once a person answers, it will let you play certain messages, and then given the option of pushing buttons, 
to take action and based on what they push you can have that status uh, fed back to the Excel file or you can have you can redirect the call to uh, a phone so they could uh, answer and say uh, no, press 1 to confirm or press 2 to cancel the appointment or press 3 to redirect and, and, uh, and uh, reschedule so the 1 and the 2 push will be reflected on the Excel file the number 3 would essentially call a receptionist to reschedule the, the appointment so uh, that uh, application is one you can have telemarketing applications so again a function complementary to, to the PBX next one please Automatic call distribution. This is a very popular feature, uh, gaining a lot of interest, especially the fact that we have a large number of concurrent calls on the PBXs, uh, the base system. Uh, it lends itself very, uh, very good for uh, small call centers or even enterprise type call centers. So the ACD that we have today is for inbound calls. Uh, in the future, we'll have it also to, for outbound uh, call campaigns. And it actually distributes the inbound calls in agent groups. Uh, you know, the agents have the ability to to either register or or register. Uh, it distributes the calls in many different uh, formats. You can see some of them here on the slide. Either uh, all of them ringing or round robin or uh, longest idle, uh, less busy or skills based. Uh, these are typical call distribution profiles. Uh, so you can choose which one you want to use. You can have agents that belong to more than one group. So if you have sales and marketing and, and support, you can have a super agent that belongs to all three and can actually log in and log out of all three individually if he wants to. Uh, next one. Okay, and then on this ACD, ACD group, uh, there are many features. For example, for the calls that are in the queue, because you have a to be dialed to an extension or redirect if they've been sitting on the queue for a certain period of time. You don't want them to hang up. So rather than hanging up, you let them go over and, and uh, redirect the call to a, an extension. Uh, you can play a welcome message and you can play a referring uh, queue message. Uh, or you can use the MP3 files I would mention to you for that purpose too. So it's a, essentially it's a distribution of incoming calls. Uh, it's applicable to all PBXs. You can install the license in all of them. Next one, please. Uh, we have a, a bar chain function which is complementary to the ACD uh, typically it goes together with ACD, but we sell it separately. Some people want to have bargain capability for certain uh, supervisors. I want to see uh, what is happening with certain extensions. Uh, you know, some sales personnel, they want to be able to listen in how they handle on the calls, or they want to whisper to the salesperson, or they want to participate in a three-way calling. So we do activate the bargain as a separate uh, function uh, license. Next one, please. This is complementary to the ACD. Um, today we have a tool for the supervisors to be able to see all the statistics of their agents. It's called the SMR. It's installed on their windows. It's a very basic uh, tool that shows uh, statistics, uh, times that the agents have been on calls or on break or uh, logged in, logged out, and so forth. But we're moving to a new uh, software that we're going to release uh, hopefully within the next uh, couple of months. Uh, it is on beta, beta trials now. It's called the FPG ACD console, and it is a web-based tool that uh, you can directly go to the URL of the PBX uh, for agents and supervisors. And you, once you log in, then you have a very nice graphical interface to be able to see all your statistics, uh, be able to control your status as far as the agents are concerned, the supervisors can actually log in, log out, and, and control the agents also. Uh, you can have uh, all the stats for uh, the agent. He can see how well he's doing on his calls. The supervisor obviously can see uh, all of his agents. 
Uh, you have a chat tool embedded in here if you want to chat with other agents uh, during your uh, call campaign. Uh, you also have a scrolling marquee. Uh, essentially, the supervisor can put messages that are scrolled to all of the agents, uh, maybe some promotion or maybe some warning or some instructions that he wants to give them. He can use that scrolling marquee for that purpose. Uh, you can manipulate your incoming calls, hand calls, answer calls, uh, or, or even place calls, or put calls in uh, hold while you uh, consult with somebody else or transfer a call is all done through the uh, GUI and you can have also wrap-up codes so if you want to once you finish a call if you want to put a code uh, that are, have been predefined uh, that are going to be used later on for evaluation of um, the call center uh, you can have that also so it is a web access there it doesn't require any kind of application it is available for all of the models we're introducing it on the QX2000 first, and uh, available, uh, we'll say, the end of June, July timeframe. So it's going to be a very nice tool, and we're actually going to grow on it for an outbound call center, and then we will also probably have a, a renewed uh, DCC console based on this platform. Next one, please. Call recording. Uh, we also have call recording uh, capability on the uh, QX. Uh, this is essentially uh, licenses that are sold for simultaneous uh, call recording, uh, simultaneous ports. So it doesn't really matter from what phone and from what trunk a call is coming or going. You can configure to record uh, coming from a specific trunk, going to a specific extension or vice versa or you can record all of the calls. Uh, so, or you can even program a button in the phones to be able to record a call. Uh, so all of that is programmable. So stack the licenses also. So the recording is stored in a recording mailbox that you can, through the GUI, can actually access and, and see with uh, password control. Uh, or you can do it through the keypad too, uh, or you can send the calls to uh, an external FTP uh, device uh, or a FTP device and for archiving, which is probably the preferred way. As far as recording inside the unit, the devices come with quite a bit of internal memory, but you can also use an SD card on the back of the unit to expand on memory for general purpose, including call recording. Next one, please. We have an audio conference bridge. Uh, by the way, any, any three-way calling is supported in, on all the phones, so you don't pay for a three-way call on these systems. But if you want to have four or more participants in a conference room or in several conference rooms, then you can buy the audio conference bridge, which is sold the same way as a call recording. It is the number of simultaneous participants in a conference bridge that you have at one given time. So we sell it for 16 or 32, and you can also stack these licenses. So uh, it could be either one conference room or many conference rooms. Uh, it can be with a, a password for access. Uh, you can also automatically dial out uh, participants uh, if you want to, or schedule a conference that will dial out certain participants at a certain time. Uh, you can record a conference if you want to, uh, password protect them, or you can have an open conference room uh, that anybody can participate, not only from the extension side, but it could be done with external callers too, or even remote uh, uh, extensions on a remote device. You can have uh, uh, mute uh, uh, functions. A participant request to speak can be done through the keypad. So uh, send email notifications as a reminder that you have a scheduled conference too. Uh, so it, it is a, a pretty complete uh, audio conference bridge uh, that is a, a licensable item on all the PBXs. Uh, next one, please. 
In addition to that, we have video conference capability. Uh, we call it the video conference bridge. Uh, essentially, it is not the typical uh, conference room system where you have a camera and an MCU unit and a, uh, and a, a star type telephone. Uh, we do the video conference uh, using video phones that you have uh, installed in the system as your regular desk phone. So if you have several participants in an audio conference uh, that have video phones, uh, on their desk, what we do is a video switching. Uh, so in all those participants, the, the video, the person that is speaking, if he has a video phone, we will show the image of that person in the other phones. And then we automatically switch the video feed depending on the person that is talking. Obviously, if the person talking is on an, analog, uh, an, an audio phone or external caller, uh, there's no image, so we will show the screen in black. But uh, it, for the video participants, uh, you can see their faces, and it doesn't show the images of all the participants, but only the person speaking. Um, or you have the option of using the keypad to uh, fix the video feed from a, one particular device if you want to see one person only. It's uh, economical. It is only $100 per uh, extension, and then obviously you need to have a video phone, but uh, you can just, uh, with just a few uh, uh, of these licenses, uh, have a video system uh, that is economical and it doesn't require that you buy an MCU or, or go to a conference room. Okay, next one. Uh, we're going to talk about the gateways we have. We already went through three PBXs. Now on the gateway side we have only four gateways. Uh, that are essentially either standalone or complementary to the PBXs. Uh, so uh, generalizing on the gateways, uh, as most of you know, it converts uh, analog or digital phone calls to SIP uh, in either direction, uh, and they have many applications. Uh, uh, our gateways. Uh, the router functions I mentioned earlier that are on the PBX. So you can have firewall and router embedded on this gateway if you want to collocate it in some remote location and uh, have that kind of protection, you can activate uh, the firewall and the router uh, functionality. You, they will auto config for the PBXs. So if you register a gateway with a QX50, then those ports will shown on the QX50 and you don't have to open the GUI for the gateway to configure. Uh, for example, on the case 200, you got four XO ports. If you connect to four gate, you can see X ports for them. They do include an auto attendant on the gateway. So even if we want to use it as a standalone, you could port incoming calls on either side, on the SIP side or on the gateway uh, trunk side to an auto attendant and allow for a, a two-stage dialing to send a call to a destination. So it gives you a lot of flexibility of what you can do with the gateway. Uh, there is a, an option for master-slave uh, configuration, and that is, uh, for example, if you have four E1 gateways, you can actually put them together uh, as a master and then configure the three slaves from the master. Okay, so you don't have to open the GUI of each individual gateway to configure. Uh, the same way you can do uh, the SIP calls. Uh, you can actually have the master be your uh, main uh, SIP um, uh, port, and you can uh, send and receive all of your phone calls to the master Ethernet port, and then the master will proxy uh, the calls that he needs to send to the slaves. So you can have, for example, a 4E1 cluster uh, of one master and three E1 slaves uh, giving you four E1 ports, but you're only sending and receiving the calls to a single IP uh, address on the master side. So it gives you the flexibility of using our simple gateway in combinations uh, to create a two, three, or four port gateway instead of having to buy an appliance that is fixed with those ports. Uh, and then since they're modular, they can be rack mounted, which I'm going to show next. So only one type of device that you stock can give you that capability. Uh, there is power redundancy, which I'm going to mention uh, shortly. 
and then low power consumption. The low power consumption is very, very important because these products are uh, very low power, uh, anything between 2 watts to about 7 watts. Like on the FXS gateway, when all the ports are used, it consumes a little bit over 7 watts. So uh, this, this is very low power compared to other devices. And there's an annual uh, savings in electricity that it is uh, su uh, substantial. For example, in the United States, uh, a QX50 can cost you 5 to $6 a year in electricity. If you're using an asterisk on a server, it will cost you 100 times more than that. So it could be $500 if you got, for example, a three or 400 watt type uh, PC that you're using is on 24-7. So there is a substantial savings in power consumption year after year when they're using these products. I think they're probably the lowest uh, uh, power consumption products in the market today for what they do. Next one, please. The first gateway is a four-port FXO. Uh, it's a $450 device. Uh, I, I, I think it's very simple. I mean, it just gives you additional four trunks to the central office. Next one, please. We do have a four-port ISDN. Uh, you can see here, $550 MSRP. It's a great price for an ISDN for port gateway. You can actually have this BRI ports in NT or TE mode if you want to. And then you can, for this product, we offer a license to upgrade it to a PBX. It's an additional $350 MSRP. Uh, so if, if you have it as a gateway and then connect it to a legacy, uh, a legacy PBX, you know, a BRI type PBX uh, system, and eventually they want to migrate to IP, you can take the PBX off that you have connected to the gateway and then upload it, upgrade it to an actual IP PBX with a license and then stick there. Four port uh, IP PBX with this license. Next one, please. And uh, uh, next Gateway is a 424 port FXS, uh, $1,100 MSRP. It uses an RJ21 connector here for 24 ports, and you can use a, a DIN cable or a telco cable to a, a punch block, which we actually sell. We have that on our catalog if you want to buy that from us. It's a double width appliance. It is actually 210 uh, uh, millimeters wide. Um, everything else is the same as the other gateway. By the way, this one would uh, register auto configure in our PBX like any other IP phone. So it will plug and play, and then it will assign the analog ports uh, automatically to default extensions. So it's very easy if we are if you plug and play with a QX PBX. Next one, please. And our last gateway is uh, E1T1. It's uh, $1,100 MSRP. Uh, half size um, device uh, can work on either mode, uh, software programmable either T or E mode, and it supports uh, PRI, CAS, or CCX, MFC to modify signaling. So pretty much works with any kind of uh, E1 trunk out there. Um, you can actually have um, uh, you can control many of these gateways from one master. You can have as many as 30 of these, 29 slaves, and then one master for the configuration part. But when you want to do the single IP on option I mentioned, it can only uh, support uh, 100 uh, simultaneous calls. So uh, that means that you can have 44 of these devices clustered together if you want to use a single IP address. Next one, please. The rack mounting kit. This is real cool. Uh, with this new devices that are metal uh, box, uh, it's a little bit hard to appreciate on the on the picture there. But the picture on the right, you see, is four racks, uh, one on top of each other, with different modules inserted in the rack. So the rack is just a metal box with slots where you insert in the front 
as many as four of the small modules, or you can insert two of the big modules. The only big module today is the Vista 24. So you can combine gateways with the PBX. You will connect them externally with an Ethernet switch, but they're all nicely mounted on a 1U height rack, okay? And, uh, and you can organize them that way. Uh, on the left side, uh, you have a back picture. It, it, there's a thumb screw that would hold, secure the unit in place. And then you see a triangular connector there on the back. That is the AC connector. So all of these modules use a bed AC power supply. You don't have the external power brick. And the gray cable is uh, power redundancy. Uh, so with this little cable, it's 12 volts, you can actually uh, power two modules together from one module power supply, or you can power both modules power supplies, and then you have power redundancy. If there's a failure in one module power supply, the other module will feed uh, the system. So you're actually gaining power redundancy uh, with this uh, new uh, QX line. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything for that. Uh, the cable comes with a rack kit, uh, or you can buy it separately. It's fifteen dollars. Uh, and also, if the power supply fails, you will get. If you configure the system, you can get a, an event notification that will report to you. Next one, please. There's a new GUI on the QX for those of you that are familiar with the Quadro line. Uh, we have created a, a new, a better organized, a lot faster GUI. Uh, there's a URL at the bottom of the page there, 168, 215, 242, 61. You can go to that URL, and that will be a QX ISDN PBX uh, GUI. Uh, the username is admin, and the password is 19. If you want to go there and play with it and change configurations, whatever you want to do, that will give you a feeling of the new GUI, which is a uh, a lot more uh, user friendly than the one that we had before. Next one. Yeah, it takes a little bit of time to update. Competitive advance. Um, in some, these are some of the bullet points that are uh, good to remember about MPG. First of all, we design all of the software and the hardware in-house. This is our own product. The only thing that is open source is Linux, and uh, and uh, but everything else is our software, and uh, we support uh, the product. There's no asterisk or free PBX or anything embedded in this. Uh, the software and the firmware upgrades are free for life. If you register on the portal, you can get free uh, updates on the software for your appliance as many times as you need. It is based on open standards, compatible with, uh, with everything that is SIP out there, including the auto configuration that we do in many of these devices, which makes the configuration a lot simpler. We've got very good technical support. Uh, we have it in the US and in Armenia. We have a ticket system. Uh, we support Alloy our distributor and he supports you, the integrator, and it, but we have plans that you can purchase for direct integrator support if you choose to do so. Uh, we also have webinar trainings for commercial uh, sales, the one we're doing now, or technical, they're published in our web. You can also um, uh, go to Dallas and go through training if you want to, and I believe Alloy uh, has some uh, trainings that they plan also so there's uh, a lot of documentation on the portal for applications and so forth to help on the technical side. Support is very good and we will help you uh, configure and, and, and dimension a, a solution. Uh, the products are mature, they're good quality, uh, very low RMA, a solid state and you know uh, Scott can probably tell you about that. They've been using and selling every year for a long, long time. Uh, low power consumption and redundancy, which I mentioned, and we're going to have some new features in uh, coming up uh, in our roadmap. Uh, we're going to have a hotel module coming up in the future with looking at WebRTC, integrating WebRTC with the system, and uh, we have a new recording tool uh, that you can install um, 
actually not installed on the on a new software release it will let you record system messages using any phone makes it a lot easier before you have to use a separate tool and bring it up uh, load it up to the system so that is coming up uh, actually it's already released on a on a on a software update that we just uh, posted so having said that go to the next one please Uh, contact us. We're on the social media. Uh, anything, any questions, salesepg.com or mario.quella.epg.com. Here's our phone number. Uh, definitely visit us on the web and subscribe to our portal. You know, register on the portal. And we give you access as a reseller and uh, you can find a lot of valuable information. So having said that, I'm done. Scott, uh, open for questions if you have any. Thank you very much, Mario. Okay, guys, if there is any questions now, um, please do raise your hand in the GoToWebinar um, portal. Um, I can click on your little raise hand, unmute you, and you can fire your questions away. Yeah, if you guys are a little bit shy and don't want to ask your questions, you can just type it away in the question panel, and I'll read it out, and, and myself or Mario will be able to answer, answer it for you as well. Okay. All right, no questions at the moment. Mario, you did too good a job. Okay. No any questions. All right, well, hopefully they were all paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, they were. Uh, any, well, Scott, we have some announcements, right, that we want to make uh, uh, as far as promotions, right? Yeah, just before we do go, before you start doing that, um, Andrew Johnson has a question about cues. Let me just unmute Andrew and he can um, ask that question. You there, Andrew? Uh, yep, can you hear me? Yes. Yep, certainly can. Uh, good. Um, yeah, I just have a question about Q. So I got distracted when you were um, on the slide talking about them. I noticed that uh, for more advanced queuing, or I wasn't sure if it was more advanced or just queuing in general, there was an extra license needed. Um, is that the case, or can just basic queuing for agents be done on the standard license? Um, yes. How does that part work? No, the, there's no license for queuing. Uh, the okay. queuing is yeah, the queuing is available. Now I don't know at the top of my head there's any limitation on the queues. I don't think there okay. is. There may be a practical one, but uh, no, you don't have to buy any license for that. So it's fairly flexible what you can do in terms of having it um, round robin and. Um, call different groups of um, phones at, at different stages through the queue? Yes. Uh, typically what you do is that you bring in, to, to go to the ACD you probably bring the call through an IBR and maybe if you're going to have multiple groups like sales, marketing and support, let them push the button and then it will drop it into that queue for sales or the yeah. queue for support and then you got agents that are assigned to that group and then uh, as, as the agents free up based on the profile then the system will ring the agent phone and let him take that call. You can actually okay, see okay. on the new tool with the queue status too. Uh, you should be able to see that. Yeah, I just uh, logged into the web, at web dashboard. I just can't see anything to do with the queues, but I, I'm not sure where I'm looking. Um, I thought so, so I was thinking maybe it's an extra feature. Yeah, just, just quickly. So Mario, in regards to the ACD, do you need to buy the ACD license to enable queuing altogether, or is there some limited version of queuing built into the Quadro without having to purchase the ACD license? There is queuing in the Quadro without the ACD license. Okay. The ACD so license the it just gives you the the, the agent. Uh huh. Okay. okay. So that's, that's what's what the I'm difference? Wondering. What does that allow you to do the ACD license? Could you explain that a bit more in depth? I don't ACD understand the difference. Well, the ACD, what it does is that it lets you create the groups with the agents and assign the agents to the groups and have the agents log in and log out or be busy or not busy. And then it would essentially let the calls that come in into the queue to ring the phones of the agents that are logged in and active. So it lets you manage the agency, you know, in, in, uh, 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 with a tool and have them log in and log out. Uh, and uh, or have agents that belong to more than one group, okay? So without okay, the I mean, HD, yeah. So without the yeah. HD license, then Mario, what do you get? With a what? 
so without using the A to D license. So when well, you go buy the A to D license. Well, without the ACD license, you can have queuing. I'm trying to figure out an example here where you can actually have a queuing. I mean, you may have a call coming in to, uh, let's say, uh, uh, an extension, and uh, and then you may have a second call that you can do either a call waiting type functions, or it could be on the queue uh, without having to have any license. But now I have so some second thoughts about. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So basically, if you with a standard queuing, you can't log agents in and out. They're just always in the queue. Well, you, you, in the in the queuing, you you act you, you you act. What you do is that you have calls that are coming in to one extensions or two extensions. Okay, if you did like a multiple extension ringing, for example, and then if they're busy on those two extensions, if on the queue and the call will be held up on the queue. Okay. Yep. So, but you cannot dynamically activate or deactivate those users, okay, as agents, as you do with the ACD, where they can actually go to the phone and hit a, a start a sequence and activate or deactivate themselves as being online or offline oh, okay. or being busy or not. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But if, if an agent is in a queue, like uh, without the license, if an agent is in the queue but they're on the phone, they're busy, the, the queue is smart enough to then ring another agent that it sees is, is, is uh, on the hook. And available, it's not something that you need. No, because the queuing doesn't know that the agents exist unless you activate ACD. The queue just is just a, a the means for holding up a call that is intended to one or more phones that you have pre-configured, fixed, and they're busy at the time. Okay, it's only when yeah they're busy at the time. It's not that, uh, for example, with the agent, the phone can be on hook, but you went to the bathroom, but you are busy. You don't want to get a call ringing. If you have a queue without ACD, it means that a call came in, and uh, and then it was destined to go to a phone. Voicemail was deactivated, queuing was activated, and it's just sitting there on the queue waiting for you to hang up the phone to get the next call. Okay. But if, if you, so, if you hit a do not disturb on your um, extension, uh, and you're part of a, a queue, shouldn't that then say, oh, he's busy, and skip that phone, and go? Uh, just ring only the the agents that are in the queue. No, because they're, yeah, no, because they're, they, there's no concept of agents in uh, in the queuing uh, that come okay. on the base system. But you know, I all I, all I'm telling you, I'm gonna have to write it down and get back to Scott and confirm it because I don't wanna uh, uh, yeah. drop the ball here. But uh, yeah, no. yeah, it's just that that that's the. I mean, I've got I sell a host of PBX and that's all just part of it, and I'm just making sure that. I, you know, I can. Uh, I'm, I've got a client that we're proposing a QX52, but I want to make sure that, um, <laughs> yes, you know, it's okay, a bit okay. comparative. Well, that, um, yeah, let me, let me. Uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll send out an email to my tech team, and, and copy Scott on it, and by probably Armenia would wake up uh, soon. Uh, they can probably answer back by uh, later on today. Uh, your okay, time. Great. Make sure that I'm not lying to you here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But but uh, all right okay, go ahead Scott. All right, all right Andrew, I'll give you a, I'll send you through an email after I get a reply back from the guys in Armenia and we'll we'll just double confirm all that. Yeah, yes. I'll get thanks Scott. I'll talk it through with you a bit more later. Yeah, I think realistically, if you need to have any advanced functionality in a queue, then you need to buy the ACD license. That's just basically what it comes down to. I'm pretty sure, but let's just confirm that later on today. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what we do is um, we have people that have purchased the ACD license because they want to have like a mini call center. Uh, they want to have that capability of agents logging in, logging out, going to the bathroom, and using the SMR, that basic stats. The meal console that we're introducing is because this is more for a more formal call center because it has real time stats uh, information that the supervisor and the agents wants to have. This is more for like a real serious uh, call center where they're probably going to be doing that function all day long. Uh, and we're still going to offer both, okay? Uh, you can still do the ACD license for distribu distribution of the calls, uh, you know, with the agent log in, log out, and then we can have the tool uh, as a separate license if you want to have all the stats and do a control for the GUI. Okay? Yep. Okay, thanks. Yep. Thanks, Mario. All right. Any other questions?
All right, guys, any other questions? Well, I've got Mario on the line. Okay, Russell, question from Russell. Okay. All right, fire away, Russell. You there, Russell? Mm -hmm. Maybe his microphone is... Can you hear me? Yeah, we'll yes. Yep, can hear you now. Right. Uh, just another question on queuing. Um, uh, does it support um, multiple announcements? So when someone's in a queue, can you set up uh, multiple sources for announcements if they're longer than, say, five minutes in the queue, um, stuff like that? Because um, I found limitations in other systems where you, you can only make one announcement or, you know, you only use one music on hold source. Okay. In the... When for the queue for the ACDC, uh, you can actually go and go up to messages, and then you have you can have a recurring message that plays every so often. Uh, the time of the description of it, or you can bring an MP3. So if you bring an MP3, it will be for the SMR, so you will have a playlist. So you can, you can do a playlist using the SMR tool on a PC, and then it will essentially play what is being uh, streamed. To the QX uh, when you're in the queue, but there's always a welcome message, which is yeah. only one time, and then the that queuing message is uh, repeatable. Right, understand. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because um, um, I've I've noticed another sort of high-end queuing that you know you can, you know, depending on the day, depending if there's outages, all that type of thing, just that that ease of changing uh, queue messages uh, would be handy. Yes, yes, exactly. And then the other options of, you know, allowing the customer to zero out or a timeout to go ring an extension is yep. useful also because some people don't want to lose the caller if the, if the queue yeah, is too so and, and also, you know, that whole uh, you're next in the queue, you're second in the queue and all that, does it support that? I don't know. We don't have that. Uh, you're coming up next. We don't have that. Right, okay. No worries. Thank you. Thanks, Russell. No worries. All right. Any well, others? Guys, I think actually is, is there another question for you, Andrew, or I'm not sure. Is there another question for you, Andrew, or have you had asked your yeah. question? Yeah, yeah, sorry, just about um uh VPN. Um the A Link handsets have built in support, I believe, for open VPN. Um but I couldn't see anything like that with the Epigee. I just thought for remote workers um, that would be a handy handy kind of thing to have where the, the uh, handset itself can just establish an open VPN connection directly to the um, QX. You mean uh, VPN capability? Uh, sorry, I couldn't hear that. So, so Mario, what he's, what he's asking is that um, with the Yaling phones and Stom phones, they all have like a built-in open VPN client in the in the handsets. Um, at the moment, Epigee only supports IPsec or PPTP or L2TP. It doesn't support open VPN as a server. Um, yeah. And he's just saying it would be a nice um, idea to have the Epigee support an open VPN server as well. Okay. Okay. I... I, I uh... I'm not familiar with OpenVPN, but I'll definitely will tell the team about that and see what they think. Because, I mean, especially actually, this is a question to you. Would it help mitigate NAS if you have? I mean, the audio is going out there. Sorry. Can't yeah, sorry, Mario. We we couldn't hear you then. Okay. Would it help you mitigate a NAS? Would it make it a lot easier for the phone behind the router to be able to set up as a remote extension with this open VPN to our device? Yes, it would make it a lot easier because at the at the moment, with if you want to have create an open VPN connection on the Yaling phone, some phones, whatever phones you might have, you have to have an additional open VPN server running on your network. If mm -hmm. that was built into the Quadro or to the QX line mm -hmm. of the products. Um, you know, that'd be a great, a, a huge advantage. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And open, right. OpenVPN is open source and would run on Linux, so it would be pretty trivial for you guys to add it um, yeah. in. Okay. Well, I, um, I'll take a note of that. I mentioned though. Maybe the guys have been looking into the background. 
and uh, I'm not aware of it. But uh, I'm not I don't say we have it today, but they may have it in the works. Uh, I mean, any, anything that helps mitigate the, the nets or remote extensions, in my book, is always welcome, you know, uh, because it, it is still, I know they're stunned this uh, initiative, but you know, they're not perfect, you know, and that is still a real pain in the butt type uh, to do many times. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be good right, if you could look into that. Okay, all right, I'll look into all of that. And thank you, very much. thank you, Mario. If there's anything we can do there, okay? Thanks, Mario. Thanks, Andrew. No worries. Anything else? All right, guys, any other questions before we wrap up? Okay, uh, um, and if you think of something, just don't hesitate to send me an email or Scott, and you know we'll we'll answer any questions you might have. Um, and uh, you know, and sometimes when you do this, you think about it and say, I forgot to ask X or Y. But don't hesitate. All right. We're having problems hearing you at the Mar at the moment, Mario. I'm okay. Sure how how about now? But we. That's ah, better. That's better. Okay. All right. Maybe it is my cheap headset. So uh, go ahead, Scott. Uh, anything else you want to cover? Okay, so this in regards to um, some promotions that we're running uh, this month till the end of June. So at the moment, um, you've probably already seen that if you buy a QX50, you will get a additional free eight IP phone license key. That's been running since the start of the month. And now for the rest of the month, we're also going to throw in a free four-port call recording license as well. So if you purchase a QX50 or a QX200, um, for the rest of June, you'll also get a free four-port recording license as well. That's right. That's right. Yeah, the one, the promotion that we have globally is a free A-port license only on the QX50. But for especially for Alloy and Australia, we're having a promotion for the additional four port license. All right. Yeah, we, missed, so, we missed the end of that. For, we missed the end of that, Mario. No, that that oh, yeah. for the 50 and the 200, we'll have the four port recording license available until the end of June. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, the eight port license is a global promotion, and that is only for the QX50. But it's also available until the end of June. Okay. Perfect. Thank you very much, Mario. All right, guys. Thank you very much. We All right. Thank your time. Thank you. And, and I think you. it's it's ten fifteen, so I guess it's time for me to have a beer. <laughs> Thank you very right. much, Mario. We do, very we well. do appreciate you staying up late to. No, no. Hour. No problem. Anytime. And uh, thanks to all of you for spending the time with me. And uh, we hope we'll repeat this again. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you all. Bye.